Shalom on brothers and sisters. And once again, this is Brother Brandon Judah Matt Duffy representing the Solid Foundation International Ministries. The Solid Foundation International Ministries. And today we're going to be talking about Black History Month. Okay. And um, the truth behind Black History Month. And uh, we're just going to unearth a lot of things um, concerning the civil rights movement, concerning the summer civil rights leaders. Okay, because uh, Black History Month is basically not nothing to be proud of. All right. First of all, I want to say you can't put a stipulation on Black History. Okay, there's no stipulation on Black History, and the reason why I say that because Black History started back. Um, it started back in the Garden of Eden, actually. Black history started back in the Garden of Eden. So you can say black history started since day one. You can't put stipulation on all history. Because you have to question yourself. If Is there a white history month? No, there's not a white history month. So therefore, we don't want stipulation on our history. Because, in fact, American history is black history. Okay? Unless the white man have a white history month, then we don't want no goddamn Black History Month, all right? But this this just goes to show how the so-called white man, uh, how he visualize blacks, okay? How he treat blacks, all right? Because that's that's if you want to call that a form of racism, because they want to always come down on us about making racist comments. But Black History Month is like one of the racist uh, events of all time, man. Because if it's not racist, then where's y'all white history month? Until I see y'all right white history month, then that's racist, man. But it's all cool because you're going to find out that the most high is racist anyway, man. And that he don't like you goddamn devils, man. So-called white man. So we ain't going to prolong any time, any more time. We're going to get straight into the lesson. And we want to say all praises due to y'all by Shimmy Hour Shy. Double honors to the elders. And also salutations to the brothers and sisters that are in this truth, man. We want you so called Negroes to understand that you are the biblical Israelites that the Bible speaks of. You Hispanics, you are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. And you Native Indians, you are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. So, all together, Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians are the children of God. No one else. Okay. So let's get into it. All right. So uh, we want to uh, look at Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King. Okay. All right. Let's uh, zoom in. Martin Luther King Jr., okay? And uh, we're going to talk about him a little bit, and then we'll go further into concerning black history. Now, what most people don't know about Martin Luther King Jr., I'm just going to tell you the truth, man. What most people don't know about this guy, that his name wasn't actually uh, Martin Luther, all right? That wasn't his name. His name was actually Michael King. Okay, he borrowed this name Martin Luther from a Catholic Protestant. All right, he borrowed that name from a Catholic Protestant. And um, let me see, can I pull it up right quick? But uh, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. You just type in uh, Martin Luther, you're gonna type in Martin Luther. And uh, we'll see what we can find here. I'm going to show you that right here. Martin Luther. This is who Martin Luther King. Uh, uh, this is the guy, Martin Luther, who Martin Luther King added to his name to put a ring to it, man. Martin Luther. Martin Luther was a German friar, a Catholic priest, okay, a professor of theology and seminal figure of the 17th century movement in Christianity known later as the Protestant Reformation. So we're not going to go all 
until Martin Luther, but we want to show you that he was a Catholic Protestant. And if I'm not mistaken, he, he actually revolted against the Roman Catholic system, man. And this is who Martin Luther King uh, named. He extrapolated to put some dignity some dignity to his name, man, because his name wasn't Martin Luther uh, King Jr. His name was Michael King Jr., all right? As you can see, Martin Luther King Jr. was an American Baptist minister. But was he an upright minister? We're going to get into that. He was an activist, at, uh, you could say a humanitarian, and a leader of African Americans. We're not African Americans, okay? I just call it so-called African Americans. We are the real Jews that the Bible speaks of. But he was a leader of African American civil rights movement, okay? He was born January 15th, 1929. In Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, he was he was assassinated on April fourth, nineteen sixty eight, Memphis, Tennessee. His spouse was Coretta Scott King, and um, his here his children and so forth, man. But we're gonna get into Martin Luther King, man. We're gonna show you that this man was not who the world portray him to be. That this guy was a goddamn sellout, man. That this guy was working for the white man, kissing the white man ass, and in the end, he got his top pop. Alright? That's the simple truth, y'all. So, we're going to bring up some of Martin Luther King's speeches against, uh, we're going to bring up his speeches that he quoted, some of his famous speeches that he quoted, alright? We're going to bring up some of the famous speeches uh, that he quoted. All right, so now we're gonna go into some of his speeches. I'm just going to show you, man. Um, all right. Okay, we're going to look at this one, man, all right? This is uh, some of his speeches. What I want to show you, man, is the truth. That's all I'm showing you, the truth. And, um, we'll probably scroll down. All right? Martin Luther King, Jr., 1929. To 1968 I have a dream today I have a dream all right now before we get into that I want to show you Jeremiah 23 chapter I want to say Jeremiah the 23rd chapter beginning with the 25th verse concerning Martin Luther King I have a dream all right I want to show you this Hold your horses. Now this is Jeremiah 23 and 5. Jeremiah 23 and 5. It says, I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have a dream. I have a dream. Now I wonder who said that, man. That was Martin Luther King. <laughs> I have heard, I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesied lies in my name. I have a dream, I have a dream, because that was Martin Luther King, okay? What he said? He said that I have a dream, I have a dream. So that was no other than Martin Luther King, all right? All right, I'm just showing you the truth. I have a dream, I have a dream. Go back to Jeremiah 23 and 25, it says... That I have heard what the prophet said that prophesied lies in my name. I have a dream. Well, I have dreamed. I have dreamed. Okay, because Martin Luther King claimed to be a so-called prophet, man. All right? That's what he claimed to be, a so-called prophet. But he was prophesying lies, y'all. Because the reason why I say he was prophesying lies, because Martin Luther King, he spoke on equality, man. He spoke on integration. And what you're going to find out is that the Bible doesn't support that, man. 
The Bible doesn't support that because the Bible actually speaks against integration. The Bible doesn't support what Martin Luther King brought forth, man. He spoke on integration when the Bible clearly despised that. He spoke on equality, and that's not found in the Bible. However, Martin Luther King, he was set up to integrate blacks, Hispanics, natives to their enemies. So he was set up to integrate us to our enemies, man. That's what I'm trying to show y'all. So y'all won't think that uh, I'm making this up, man. I want to show y'all the truth on Dr. Martin Luther King so you won't be lost, man. And like I said, Dr. Martin Luther King, he was set up to integrate us to our enemies. When he should have been preaching on that, we should be separate from the white man. He should have been preaching on separation, not integration. Now, I know a lot of you people gonna, gonna probably think that I'm speaking against Martin Luther King. I think that I'm speaking against the civil rights leaders. Or y'all may even think I'm speaking against the civil rights movement. But it's the truth, man. Martin Luther King was a goddamn sellout, man. And the Mosai had his, his top pop. Okay, he was set up to emasculate us, to make us weak as a nation, man. Because the Mosai didn't never say in the Bible about integrating with our damn enemies, man. But the problem is, you so-called Negroes and Hispanics and Native Indians, which are the Israelites, don't know who your enemies are. But we're going to show you. So-called Negroes and Hispanics and Native Indians, you are the Israelites the Bible speaks of. And nowhere in the Bible does the Mosai tells us to be integrating with our enemies, man. Okay, I'm going to show you something else. Alright, so let's take a look at the table of nations. Okay, here's a look at the table of nations. Number one is Israel, okay? If you're, if you're a Negro, Hispanic, or Native Indian, if you are a descendant of Negro or a descendant of Native blood, you are an Israelite, man. But if you're not, you are a Gentile and a heathen. And from 2 to 18, the Most High does not deal with. And Martin Luther King was preaching that we should be integrated to our enemies, which are 2 to 18. Okay? Show you something else, man. Because these are our enemies according to the Bible. I'm going to show you. The white man, so-called white man, each ending is... Uh, Assyrians, Syrians, Arabs, Chinese, Japanese, all these Africans. These are our enemies that the Bible speaks of. And what Martin Luther King was doing was wrong, man. Because he was trying to integrate us to our enemies. Like I said, that we are number one. We are the Israelites. We are the chosen people of the Most High. Alright? So let's get that. I want to show you that. And Martin Luther King was trying to integrate us. Uh, he was trying to integrate us to these people. And these are our enemies. White folks, African folks, Chinese and Japanese, Arabs and East Indians. Those are our damn enemies, man. Martin Luther King was preaching on integration. That's why we was bringing out in the scriptures that he said, I have heard what the prophet said. This is Jeremiah 23 and 5. They prophesied lies. Yeah, because Martin Luther King wasn't preaching on that Israel should be separate from their enemies. He was preaching on that Israel should be equal to their enemies. See? And he was prophesying lies. He was prophesying lies in the Most High's name. Saying, I have a dream. I have a dream, man. Okay, let's go to, down to Jeremiah 23 and 6. It says, how long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? That's prophesying lies, man. Yes, they are prophets of the seat of their own heart because the truth didn't come from Martin Luther King. Every time he opened his goddamn mouth, it was a lie, man. That's the truth, man. I have a dream today. Basically, he said, I have a dream today that one day little black boys and black girls would be able to join hands. With little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream. 
I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Martin Luther King, man, he was a motherfucking damn puppet, man. And I'm going to tell you the truth, man. Okay, now check this out. That one day, little black boys and girls will be able to join hands. He said he have a dream that one day, little black boys and girls will be able to join hands. Let me tell you what the uh, the Mosai says in his word about this joining hands, man. I'm going to show you this. Okay, so you can see the truth, man. I'm bringing the truth out against Martin Luther King. Now look at Proverbs 11 and 21. It says, though they, though hand join hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of righteousness shall be delivered. So the most I say, look, man, you so-called black folks, you so-called uh, Hispanics, and you so-called natives, which are the Israelites, you can try to go off and join hands with the white man and the East Indians and the Arabs and the Chinese, Japanese, and all these damn Africans and, and, and these Gentile nations. You can go out and join hands with them, but that doesn't stop judgment from coming on them, man. Because I'm telling you, that's why it was bringing it out in Proverbs 11 21. Though hand join hand, because this is a goddamn melting pot in America. We think we all is one. We think we all have one God. We think that, that we don't have enemies. But you black folks, Hispanics, and natives, gonna find out that you have enemies, man. So even though you go off and try to make peace and join hand with another Gentile nation, with another Gentile nation, such as these, you try to go off and join hands with the white folks, Arabs, Chinese, Japanese, Africans, East Indians, because you're not to be joining hands with them, because you are the Israelites the Bible speaks of, man. You so-called Negroes are from the tribe of Judah, man. All right? You so-called Hispanics, man. Yeah, all of these right here are the 12 tribes of Israel, man. So-called Negroes with Indians, Haitians, Dominicans, Guatemalans, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, North American Indians, North American Indians, Seminole Indians, Argentina to Chile, Colombia to Uruguay, and Mexicans. So all together, just Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians. You are the 12 tribes of Israel, man. You are the most high chosen people. We are the children of God. Not everybody else, man. So even though you try to go off and, and get with the white man and get with the Arabs and Chinese and all these other Gentile nations, that ain't going to stop the judgment of the most high from coming upon you, man. Because it says that the, even though they hand join hand, even though hand join the hand, the wicked, the wicked shall not be unpunished. All right? The Gentile nations. But the seed of the righteousness shall be delivered. And this is in Proverbs 11 and 21. Even though they join in, the wicked shall not be unpunished, man. But you can see right here, Martin Luther King was trying to integrate every damn body, man. He was trying to integrate Negroes to the white man. Trying to integrate us to this damn devil, man. Martin Luther King, he wanted to sit down with this goddamn devil, man. I hate this motherfucking white man. And I'm going to tell you straight up. Because the most high don't like you eat mice. You eat mice was set up to be the devil, man. Y'all was set up to be the serpent of the earth. Y'all was set up to be the vessels of wrath that spit it to destruction. And Martin Luther King talking about black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and girls as sisters and brothers. And y'all don't forgot who the damn enemy is in America, man. The white man is your damn enemy in America. And you need to wake up and understand that, man. And I'm going to show you this, man. Because he's talking about joining the hands with someone. He preaching on integration when he should have been preaching separation. And I'm going to show you this. Okay, here it is. This is St. Luke. Let's see if this is talking about integration. Yahweh said in St. Luke 12.51, Yahweh, who the world calls Jesus Christ, said, suppose ye that I come to give peace on the earth. He said, I tell you, nay, which is no, but rather division. So Yahweh said, if you suppose that I come to give peace on the earth, you got to be out of your damn mind, man. Because I tell you the truth. No, I didn't come to give peace on the earth, but rather division. Okay. 
Not integration like Martin Luther King preached. But the most I said that I'm coming to give the vision on the earth. Now why would he say that? I'm going to show you why he said that. I'm going to show you exactly why he said that. Let's go into Deuteronomy uh, 7 and 6. It says, For thou art a holy people, talking about who? The nation of Israel. When he says, Thou art a holy people, he's talking about number one, the nation of Israel, okay? Not from two on down. He's talking about number one, Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians, which are number one. He said, What? He said that, For thou art a holy people, to the most high thy God. Okay. It says. The most high thy God have chosen thee. To be special people. And to himself. Above all people. That are upon the face of the earth. So we are better than all these motherfucking Gentile nations man. Seriously. We are better than the white man. We are better than the Arabs. We are better than the East Indians. We are better than the Chinese. We are better than the Japanese. We are better than the Africans. And every other nation that are not Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians, man. We better than these damn Gentile nations. Okay? That's why I said that he chose us to be what? A special people. And to himself above all people. That means above these people right here. Above the white man. Above the Arabs. Above the Chinese. Above the Japanese. Above the Africans. Above the East Indians. And so forth. He chose Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians as his people. His special people above all people. So we're not the same. And like I said, Martin Luther King, man, he was preaching this shit, man. He was trying to emasculate our people by, by, by basically integrating them instead of telling them to separate Instead of telling them to have their own businesses. Instead of telling them to build up their own communities. Instead of telling them to build their own organizations. Build their own structure. He was integrating us to these damn devils, man. Okay. Thanks to Martin Luther King. You got uh, brothers that's out here fucking white women now, man. At his highest. Thanks to Martin Luther King, you got brothers that are going off putting perms in their hair trying to be like the white man. Thanks to Martin Luther King, you got women out here that are perming their hair trying to be like the white woman. Thanks to Martin Luther King, you got white women that even deny being black. You got brothers that even deny being black. Thanks to Martin Luther King, you got brothers that bleaching their skin. Thanks to Martin Luther King, you got sisters out there that's bleaching their skin. Thanks to Martin Luther King, you got no black man. Half of these black men don't even want to be black because they want to claim white supremacy. Thanks to Martin Luther King, these sisters, these sisters don't even want to be black. Thanks to Martin Luther King, man. All you black brothers and sisters, half of you want to be like the white man. Thanks to this bastard right here, man. I don't feel sad for him because the most I killed his ass, man. Because he wasn't telling you the truth. Nowhere in the Bible does it preach integration. And I'm going to show you some more scriptures. Nowhere in the Bible does it preach this, bro. I'm going to show you some more scriptures. Nowhere in the Bible does it support this. Let's look at Leviticus. 20, chapter 24, verse. It says, But I have said unto you, ye shall inherit their land, talking about the Israelites. It says, And I will give unto you to possess it, talking about the land of Canaan, and the land that floweth with milk and honey, that's the land of Canaan. He says, I am the Most High, your God, which have separated you from other people. He did what? He separated us, not integrated us, man. And as you can see right here, Martin Luther King talking about Little black girls and black boys will be able to join hands, man. And it don't say that in the Bible. It says that the Most High separated us from the other people. That's right. Let's go down to the 26th verse. It says, And ye shall be holy unto me, you Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians, because you the Israelites. You shall be holy unto me, for I am the Most High. I am the Most High. I'm holy. And how servant you, I did what? I serve it you from other people that ye should be mine. So the most I say, I serve it you. So what does that mean? Let's look at server in the Strongs. It says, 
servant means badal in, in the strong concordance at Hebrew 9.14. So let's, let's see what that says because he said he served us. Servant means to divide, to separate, to serve, to be set apart, to make a distinction, to make difference, to divide in parts, to separate oneself, to withdraw from, to separate oneself into, to be separated, to be excluded, to be set apart, not integrated, not speaking of union, not speaking of bond. So when we go back to the scriptures right here, it says that in Leviticus 20 and 26, the most I said that he served us, man. He served you from other people. The other people that he served you from is these devilish people right here, man. It's these Gentiles and heathens. Because Gentile is a, this, anybody, you are, you are considered a Gentile if you're not from the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you're not from the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you are a Gentile. White folks are Gentiles. Arabs are Gentiles. Chinese are Gentiles. Japanese are Gentiles. Okay? Uh, Africans are Gentiles. But the Most High said what? He said that he served us from other people. Unlike Martin Luther King, he said one day little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white girls. Uh, with, little, with, with little white boys. I have a dream. Yeah, you can keep on dreaming, man. Because this motherfucker dream will never come to pass. Because you have dreamed lies, Martin Luther King. Because the Most High set us up. Uh, um, and, and he set white man, and, and he set the white man as our enemy of the, of the Bible. Okay? So, you can dream on, man. I'm going to show you something else. Oh, it's going to get heavy, y'all. It's going to get very heavy, man. It's going to get very heavy. Let me show you something else. We're going to stroll down. So you can keep dreaming, man. Martin Luther King was not a great leader, man. You're going to find out that. You're going to find out the truth. He... He uh, set himself up like he's some great leader, man. Martin Luther King is not a leader. Martin Luther King, like I said, man, over half of his writings anyway was uh, plagiarized, man. Over half of his writings. So I'm going to show you something else. Because Martin Luther King consistently spoke on integration. I'm going to show you something else, what the Bible speaks on. All right? Since he spoke on integration... I got to show you that he wasn't lining up with the Bible. I got to show you that he should have been speaking on separation. Look at Matthew 25 and 31. It says, when the Son of Man, which is Yahweh Shai, which you the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, it says, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. This is talking about when the second coming of Christ, when he returns on the earth. It says, Matthew 25 and 32, and before him shall be gathered, what? All nations. Yeah, because when he comes back on the earth, all these nations right here going to be gathered before the Most High. Okay? All these nations. Let's see what he's going to do. Let's see if he's going to integrate the white man and Arabs and Chinese, Japanese, and Africans and East Indians. Let's see if he's going to integrate uh, all these nations together like Martin Luther King claimed. It says, before him shall be gathered what? All nations, like I showed you. He shall what? He shall separate them, man. He shall separate them one from another as the shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. Yeah, because when you read the Bible, you're going to find out that the sheep that the Bible speaks of is actually the Israelites, okay? That's the sheep. You sheep are the Negroes, okay, so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians. That's the sheep that the Bible speaks of, man. Which are the Israelites, which are the children of God. Okay, so that's the sheep the Bible speaks of. Okay, when they say he shall separate the sheep from the goats. But the damn goats, let me show you who the goats are. The goats are actually the so-called white man. Like that's, Let's not focus on number one because that's the sheep that the most I going to separate from the damn white man. The goats are the white man. The white race. Because goat's hair are straight, but the sheep's hair are woolly, okay? 
And he gonna separate these goats from these sheep, not integrate. This is a metaphorical speech saying that when Most High come back and when Christ come back, he gonna separate black folks from white folks because he made white folks our enemy and he made white folks to rule over us for breaking his law, statutes, and commandments. And that's why the white man been whooping our ass, man. But when he come back, he gonna separate these damn devils from the uh, blacks and the Spanish and native Indians. He shall separate the sheep on his right hand. He shall separate who? The sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. He gonna put you goddamn devils, you white folks, on the left side, and he gonna put Israelites on his right side. He gonna put you Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians, which are Israelites, on his right side, but he gonna separate you damn white folks, and he gonna put y'all asses on his left side, and he gonna destroy y'all asses, man. That's why I said he shall set the sheep on his right side, and he shall set the goat on his left. You white folks are the goat. If you don't believe me, check out Daniel, the 8th chapter, and read the 21st verse, talking about uh, beginning with the Greeks. In Daniel chapter 8, verse 21, how Alexander was the first king to rule over Greece, and he was a white man. And he and, and the Greeks was called the he goats, man. So he's talking about you white folks. But if you uh, check out concerning the sheep, if you look in the Bible, um, you can look at, I think, Psalms 50 and 51, I want to say, it talks about how the sheep are the Israelites, man. We're going to be separated from these white folks. We didn't, we wasn't made to be integrated like Martin Luther King preached, man. Okay? I'm just bringing out the truth to show you, man, that Martin Luther King, man, he was going off. That he was really going off, man. I'm trying to show you the truth. It's not hatred, but we are the Israelites. Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians. And he preached on integration when he should have been preaching on separation, man. That's why we were bringing out in the scriptures earlier when it says, uh, I've dreamed, I've dreamed, you know. Let's go back to that. That's why we was, when it, uh, basically, when we brought out Jeremiah 23, Excuse me, y'all. The camera is shaking. Um, when we brought up Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, uh, when we were bringing out the 25th verse, let's go back. When it said that I have heard what the prophet said, that they prophesied lies in my name, saying that I have dreamed, that I have dreamed. Yeah, because he prophesied lies, man. Martin Luther King, you can dream on, man. You can dream on, brother. It's the simple truth, bro. Martin Luther King was not a great leader, y'all. That's why we're bringing out the scriptures. And we're going to show you something else concerning Martin Luther King. He was not a great leader, man. All right? They upheld him like he's some great leader. Martin Luther King was a liar, man. All right? Martin Luther King was on the FBI surveillance for several years until he died. Due to the, uh, he was tied to the communist organization. He accepted, he accepted funds from the organization to formulate his movement. He received money from the communist um, from the communist movement. Martin Luther King basically attended a communist training school, but he but he been set up like some great leader. Okay, you can't stand for the Most High and sell out for the white man at the same time. You can't stand for another nation of people at the same time. You can't do both. It's rather you believe in the Most High with all your heart and soul, or rather you be a damn slave to the white man, alright? He was tired with this communist party, man. He was tired to the Soviet Union. He was dealing with them, man. This is the reason why he was shot down. This is the reason why he was his top got popped, man. Because he had appointed communist leaders to run certain districts, man. He was working for the white man. How you gonna have black power then go get power from the white man and set up your movement? Come on, man. Just like the uh, NAACP did, was fucking around with the white man, getting their uh, funded, the uh, white man funded them money, man. So-called Negro gets his power and position from uh, from selling himself to another nation. That's how they get power and position by selling out to another nation, man. By selling out to these so-called white folks. All right. So he wasn't a great leader. I'm gonna show you this in the scripture, man. Let's go to Hosea 4 and 6. 
Jose at four and one. I want to say he wasn't a great leader, y'all. Y'all better wake up, man. Let's look at Jose at four and one. It says, "Hear the word of the Most High, ye children of Israel, for the Lord have controversy with the inhabitants of the land." Because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of the Most High in the land. It says there is what? There is no truth in this land, man. There is no truth in America, man. America was built on deceit, lies. That's why when you look at the blue in the American flag, that blue symbolizes the I mean, that blue symbolizes deception, man. Because there is no truth here. You've been lied to in America. Everything that you have believed concerning history has been a lie. Okay? It says. By swearing, by lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out in blood, touch it blood. Okay, now if you go down, man, Hosea 4 and 6 say, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Yeah, because you don't know a damn thing about Martin Luther King. Because thou has rejected knowledge. Because when we try to tell you that Martin Luther King was not a great leader, you reject this knowledge, man. When we try to tell you that basically we're not basically hating on the civil rights, uh, or whatever. Well, you can say we are hating on the civil rights. Because we don't want no motherfucking rights compared to this white man. We want all separate rights. You know what I'm saying? Or you can say that we're speaking against the civil rights movement. You can say that. But when you say that, you reject knowledge, man. When you say, oh, man, they just hating on Martin Luther King. You reject the knowledge. He say, I will also reject thee. Now, we're going to go up a little bit more. Now, look right here. It says, uh, go down a little bit. Um, we're still in the book of Hosea. Okay. Now it says, uh, Yet let no man strive nor reprove one another for thy people as they that strive with the priests. Okay. Now it says, uh, Let me see. Uh, let me go down. Um, let me see right quick. We're still in Hosea the fourth chapter. I'm looking for something right quick. I want to bring out people. Um, I'm looking for something right quick. I want to bring out. Okay, I want to. I'm looking for something that I want to bring out. Let's look at Amos 3 and 1. It says, Hear the word of the Most High has spoken against you, O children of Israel, because this is who we are. We the children of Israel, Negroes, and Spanish and Native Indians. We are the children of the Most High. No one else. So he said, hear this word that the Most High has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You have I known of all the families of the earth. He said, you the only ones. He says, who? The children of Israel, right here. The children of Israel, he says, you, you have I known of all families of the earth. Now, we went over the families of the earth earlier. The families of the earth are talking about these Gentile, heathenistic nations, okay? All right. The number one is the children of Israel from two down. From two on down are the families of the earth. He's saying, you Israel, which are Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians, have I known of all the families of the earth. That means from two to eighteen. You have I known because I don't deal with white folks. I don't deal with Arabs. I don't deal with Assyrians. I don't deal with Chinese. I don't deal with Japanese. I don't deal with Africans. I'm only dealing with Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians, which are number one. So you, children of Israel, have I known of all families of the earth? See, so the Most High, you can see right here, doesn't agree with race mixing. He doesn't agree with intermingling. He doesn't agree with integration like Martin Luther King preached. He doesn't agree with that shit, man. So I hope you see that Martin Luther King was set up to weaken our people. When he should have been preaching that we should be separate people from our enemies. He was trying to join us to our enemies, man. The Bible don't never speak about that. Let's go back. You have I known of all families of the earth, therefore will I punish you for your iniquities. Now, look at Amos 3 and 3. 3. It says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can two walk together 
except they be agreed? Can two walk together? What is talking about? Can two walk together? That means, let's go back. Israel. Can the so-called Negro and the walk, white man walk together except they be agreed? If white folks hate the so-called Negro, I'm going to show you this, man. I'm going to show you this. Just hold your horses. We're going to show you the truth. Concerning today, you will know the truth, man. Because it said, what? Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can two walk together? Ain't that what the scripture said? Let's go back. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can they? What I want you to see is right here. Okay. I want you to see this, man. Let me zoom out. Let me zoom out. Can two walk together? Can Israel and Edom? I want to show you. The Edomites. The Edomites right here, which are the so-called white man. The Edomites. Let's go back. Israel and Edom. Can two walk together except they be agreed? If white folks hate the fuck out of black folks, can they be agreed? If black folks don't like you crackers, can we be agreed? If you calling us niggers and we calling y'all asses crackers, can they walk together except they'll be agreed? If the most high put you devils over here, you, you white folks as our enemies in the Bible, can we be agreed? No, we cannot. So therefore, Concerning Amos. Therefore, can two walk together except they'll be agreed? No. The only way you can walk together and be agreed if you go off and start kissing ass of the so-called white man. That's the only way that you can be together. Alright? If you go off and start kissing ass, if you start selling out, and we know all you artists in the industry that have sold out to the so-called white man, all you movie stars, all you actors that have agreed to this so-called white man deal, that have sold out, y'all have agreed, man. And Martin Luther King was no other than a sellout, man, because he agreed. By hooking up with the communist movement, man, and start fucking around with these white folks. So he agreed, started disagreeing with the white man. That's why the scripture said, can two walk together, except they'll be agreed. You ain't going to walk. If the Bible tells you that the white man is the damn devil, how can you walk with him, man? The only way you can walk with him, if you be agreed, if you start kissing his ass. And that's what Martin Luther King did. And that's what all the other civil rights leaders did. And all the other NAACP and the civil rights movement, they were kissing ass from this white man. And I'm going to show you this, man. Martin Luther King wasn't no damn leader. He was a damn uh, show, man. Let me show you concerning the curses. Just hold your horses. We're going to do the remedy, the 28th chapter. Showing you the curses, man. Deuteronomy 2844. It says, What? He shall land to thee. He shall land to thee, and thou shalt not land to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Because he was telling the Israelites, For you breaking my commandments, I'm going to make the white man, the what? I'm going to make the white folks the head, man. But I'm going to make you the damn tail, man. You're going to be at the end. I'm going to put these crackers over you, black folks. You so-called Negroes, which are the Jews. He shall lend to thee. Yeah, because he going to be able to lend you out money, currency, funds. He going to be able to fund you money, but you ain't going to be able to give him a damn thing. Thou shalt not lend to him. So everything that you desire in this earth going to come from this white man. And if you think these political black leaders, if you think they wasn't sellout to the white man, you a damn joke, man. Because the whole NAACP, the civil rights movement, the civil rights leaders, they went to the damn white man to get their funds to start their program, man. He shall land to thee. Yeah, because that's what happened. 
The white man gave Martin Luther King funds to set up his movement, man. King accepted the funds from the organization to formulate his movement, man. So he wasn't no man of damn power and structure. He went to the white man. One of the curses, man. He shall lend to you black folks, which are the Jews. He shall lend to you, you, you black folks, which are the Hispanics. He shall lend to you black folks, which are the natives. But you won't be able to lend to him. Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians. That's why we are constantly running back and forth to the bank, borrowing money. Then we take out loans. Then we mess around, fuck around, and get in debt. Because it's said that he shall lend to thee. We won't be able to lend him a damn thing, man. Because we will be brought down at a low state. But he shall be the head. That shall be the tail. So if you think that the white man wasn't over these damn civil, this civil rights, over these civil rights leaders and the civil rights movement. If you think the white man went over that, you sadly mistaken, man. Because you need to go back and see the curses, man. He shall lend to thee, but thou shalt not lend to him. You know what I'm saying? Farrakhan did the same thing to form his movement when he was fucking around with Gaddafi, man. You know what I'm saying? So don't think the black man rose up in power on his own. No, man, because we ain't got no power. Because the curses came on Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians for breaking this law, statutes, and commandments, man. There's a lot more to say about Martin Luther King, man. Having sex with white with white woman, having sex, we all guilty of it, but we ain't trying to uh, say we not guilty of it. You know what I'm saying? But like, man, for him to be a political activist and claim to be that type of person to to lead us as a nation of people, man, he was having sex with white whores. If you don't believe me, you can read a book called The Walls Come, Come Tumbling Down. Uh, uh, he uh, Basically, he would raise church donations to have drunken sex parties. Martin Luther King used the tithes from the church to, to, to fund drunken sex parties, man. He'll go in and hire like two or three white whores, and then he'll beat them, he'll brutalize them. And even the FBI agents admitted this, man. I'm not making it up. Come on, man. It's the truth, bro. He was not a great leader, man. He was set up. And I'm not going to spend my whole entire day talking about this, man. I'm just trying to show you the truth, man. That's all I'm here to offer the truth. That's all I'm here to offer. Let's go back. Jeremiah 23, 25. I have heard what the prophet said that prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. That was Martin Luther King the scriptures were speaking about, man. I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be? How long are you going to tell lies? I mean, so basically, man, that, that sums everything up, man. And um, I'm going to do a part two, and part two is going to actually be about Black History Month. Because I wanted to go over this concerning Martin Luther King. And like I said, black history, it started in the Garden of Eden, man. Black, black history started in the Garden of Eden. And um, before I close out, you know, and before I close this thing out, I just want to say, man, I want to give you one more verse, all right? One more verse before I close this out. Uh... But Martin Luther King, like I said, uh, he he wasn't a great leader, man. I mean, and like I said, this is Brother Brandon Judah Matt Duffy. Brother Brandon Judah Matt Duffy, man. And I don't have time to be sitting down telling you lies, man. I don't have time to actually be making up false accusations, man, if, if they were not true. You know, I'm trying to edify you, you Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians to wake up to see that you are the biblical... Israelites that the Bible speaks of. You are the most I've chosen people, man. And uh, Martin Luther King, I know he seemed to be a great leader, but he wasn't, y'all. He was set up, man. And and and, and he was uh, borrowing money from these so-called white folks, the Soviet Union, and he got beside himself and tried to go against them in the end. And um, he got his top pop, man. He was killed. He was assassinated, man. So, man, I want to give you one more verse, and then we'll close out. Like I said, once again, it's a solid foundation, International Ministries. And I want to give you one more verse, and then we'll close out. This is Isaiah 9 and 16, and um, we'll close out, all right? 
Isaiah 9 and 16. Let's zoom in. Isaiah 9 and 16. It says, for the leaders of this people caused them to earth. Yeah, the leaders, the leaders of this people caused them to earth. Who called them to earth? Martin Luther King, man. He called them to earth. Martin Luther King. All right. He called them to earth. Let's go back. Isaiah 9 and 16. For the leaders of these people called them to earth. And they are led. They are led of them are destroyed. It says, so if you follow these leaders, man, you're going to be destroyed. They that are led them down. And Martin Luther King had a lot of followers. So I guess there's a lot of people that was destroyed back in his time for the lack of knowledge. And, uh, man, the leaders of these people called them to earth. Not only Martin Luther King, but Ab Sharpner, Jesse Jackson, and so forth, man. These damn fake-ass uh, wannabe upright men and, uh, and and real people of the Most High. They leaders that cause people to earth, man, because they ain't nothing but a damn joke, man. Jesse Jackson, Ab, Ab Sharpner, Al Sharpton and um, all these other political leaders need to sit their ass down, man, because they causing the people to earth. They not they not men of a a, a real a, they not men of real revolution. They leading the people and they're causing them to earth, man, leading them to destruction. So that's all I wanted to say, man. Part two is gonna be on Black History. That's soon to come, man, because I said that don't label all history to one month. American history is Black History. So until next time, this is Brother Brandon Judah Matt Duffy. Brother Brandon Judah Matt Duffy. And um Until next time, shallow on, brothers and sisters, man. Shallow on.